This is part one of building a really useful robot that can do practical tasks in the home or office. If you've been watching my channel for a while though, you know that I've built several other robots and I've got some of them here. I previously demoed the Robotis Turtlebot which runs ROS, the robot operating system, and that uses a laser scanner to map and navigate its environment, and of course that's a kit off the shelf so it works really well. I then went on to build my own ROS robot that again uses a laser and a Raspberry Pi running ROS, and that just about works okay, the map's not too bad, and the navigation works sometimes, but it's not very good. That's due to a multitude of reasons all the way through from the hardware build all the way through to the software configuration. So the next version's gonna be much better. I also built a tracked robot and that can navigate using vision, using a deep learning model from Nvidia, which I retrained using transfer learning to look at specific markers that it navigates between. And of course there's OpenDog, which walks pretty well on four legs, although it's not really ready for practical tasks at the moment and it needs a little bit more work doing on it. So for this project, we're gonna build another wheeled robot that I can use for ongoing development of intelligent robots that's robust and reliable, but also big enough that it's got an arm and it can reach the table. So we can literally say, hey robot, go over to that table and go and get that cup and it knows what you're talking about. It can navigate to the table using mapping and navigation in ROS potentially, and it can also recognize cups using a deep learning model or whatever we want it to go and get. It knows the kinematics for its arm, so it can grab the thing and bring it back to you. So all these projects are open source and you can find them on my GitHub and the links in the description to this video. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description as well. Patrons and YouTube channel members get all the videos up to a week early and also sneak peeks and you can be part of that discussion. But let's get started. It was going to be substantial, didn't I? It's about 450 millimeters in diameter and the wheel's about 200 millimeters in diameter. So thanks to 3D Fuel for providing the filament for this project. Check out 3dfuel.com. Right, we've got some other parts here that I've made as well and all of this assembles. So let's have a look at how it goes together. First of all, my wheels are made in several pieces. So we've got a rigid PLA hub here and I've got these keys on that hold the tire on. That is printed in a flexible TPU and that of course has the same indents on so that it doesn't slip on there and it won't slip off the hub. We've then got a 3D printed T5 pulley and all three of those go together to make the completed wheel and that's gonna ride on bearings driven directly by a belt drive. The main base of the robot is printed in four parts and these are printed on the Lulzbot Morstruder with a 1.2 mil nozzle so each section only took 12 hours and weighs about six or 700 grams so the whole thing's pretty substantial. It's held together with these blue plates inside that you can just about see, which are screwed on the inside. So that should hold it together. But there's still a little bit of wobble in there. So on the bottom, we've got some extrusions. So those fit onto the bottom there, which means that the whole robot rests on these and these are gonna hold the axle and all of the stuff for the wheels. So those are held on with some more blue plates that are bolted onto the extrusion and screwed onto the plastic. And the back ones are slightly different. They've got a piece on which we'll discuss in a moment. So those are all bolted on at each end and now that is incredibly rigid. Don't think I can move that, feels incredibly substantial and obviously with a metal in, makes it a bit more bottom heavy. So obviously it goes that way up with the wheels on, the axle mounted on those extrusions, as well as two casters. So let's see how that fits together. This is the main axle that runs through the robot and we've got this interesting looking mechanism here which has got a pivot in the middle. So one side is gonna be fixed to the robot in the base and the other side is gonna pivot up and that's gonna make a suspension arm and each one of those is gonna have a little caster fitted but on the other side. On each end of that is another block with a hole in and that's gonna hold this down to the 2020 extrusion as well as these two holes here bolted down and obviously the big wheels go on the end. 
So that's bolted in there and this side is on a hinge so that it can hinge up and that's going to be the suspension arm so that if we run over a bump we don't get grounded. So my wheels are on, those are the main drive wheels of course and we've got the two casters. Now one of these is fixed and one is on that sprung suspension arm and that'll get sprung this way and I've left holes here to put the springs in which I haven't got yet so that it's sprung flat but it can go and do its suspension thing if the thing runs over bumps. The main drive wheels each have a bearing, one in the front and one in the back, just like a skateboard wheel and a bushing, so it fits the axle perfectly and the axle is fixed and the wheel is driven by its own pulley. We've got these collar clamps which fit on and those are 3D printed just to stop the wheels falling off. Earlier on you might have noticed this hole that I left in one of the pieces. And that is for the base of this 2080 extrusion which is what the body is going to go on and an arm on top which is going to ride up and down so that it can come right down and the arm can reach the ground or it can go right up and it can reach tabletops. It's also going to be a head of the robot with cameras and sensors and things like that in there and that's going to be driven probably by a ball screw and another motor. Of course that's going to be cross braced on the top because it's only sat in that hole at the moment with some shims to make it the right size. So we're going to have more base of this robot that's going to mount the laser scanner on the front really low down and a control panel and other things. The next part of the build is going to be putting the drivetrain and the motors in. But before we do that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor. And that is brilliant. I've been building things since I was a child, long before the internet existed, and even back in 2004 when I started building robots and writing about them on my website, the internet was a very different place. YouTube didn't even exist, so finding information was hard. A platform like Brilliant would have been a great help to me back then. Brilliant is maths and science simply done right. They inspire people to play with the ideas of STEM, that's science, technology, engineering and maths, and elevate it from something that people often fear to a great experience of guided discovery. Brilliant features active learning because interactive problem solving is much more effective than just watching lectures. Learning is better when you discover something yourself rather than just memorising it. All of the courses at Brilliant are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers and professionals from places like MIT, Microsoft, Google and more. Brilliant is interactive and engaging, a fun way to build your STEM and problem solving skills. You can see math and science in a new way by visually interacting with them. The courses show you that math and science are essentially a way of thinking. As well as being able to learn with Brilliant on the web, there's also an app with all the same content. I really like the computer science courses, I found one on artificial neural nets, and also a course on algorithm fundamentals, which is really good for brushing up on basics. The first 200 people to sign up using my special link will get 20% off their annual subscription. That's brilliant.org slash James Bruton, and I've put that link in the video description as well, so don't forget to sign up with that link soon so that you get the discount. That's brilliant.org slash James Bruton. Right, let's get back to those motors and the robot drivetrain. So here's my drivetrain, and this is just consists of two brushless motors, and these are the O-Drive branded 6374 150 kV motors that have got tons of power. They're far too fast, but that's going to be fine. And I was going to consider a two-stage belt reduction, what I'm actually going to do is just a single belt onto that wheel. So this sits over the wheel arch on each side, and we've just got that motor with the 3D printed T5 pulley on. That's just going to drive the wheel directly. We've also got encoders on each one, and again these are from the O-Drive Robotics web shop. Those plates just bolt onto that 2060 we put in the bottom of the robot, and that's the drive belt there ready to go onto the wheel. Well, it seems to run perfectly well, and those belts are nice and tight, and of course we can slide that mechanism forward and back a bit to tension the belts if we need to. But that seems to be working pretty well and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure these motors will be high enough power and if not we can put in another intermediate stage, there's plenty of space in there for another pulley. You'll have also noticed there's a nice notch in here to take that 2080 that goes into the hole in the base. So that seems to be held on pretty well, it feels pretty substantial and pretty firm. We are going to have a lid on this though that comes and grips around that stick as well and you might see I've got a little bezel on here already and that's the piece that we're going to make next. The top looks like four more sections which are bolted down and we'll look at that in a moment. We've got a recess for a laser scanner that's going to sit in the front here to aid with the navigation under ROS. And we've also got a panel here I haven't designed yet and that's going to be a general control panel for things like the emergency stop, the power switch and anything else that we need.
Right, so that's the lid on. I'm pretty happy with the look of this so far. We've got that space for the control panel at the back and we've got the place for the laser I mentioned at the front. So I'm pretty happy with that. It looks pretty commercial at the moment. I've also added some wheel hubs there just to encapsulate that clamp that holds the wheels on. So uh, pretty happy with the aesthetic so far. But let's have a look at how this lid is held on. Each of these sections has these recesses with two bolts in there, the socket cap bolts, and those go into these pieces these blue sections fitted into the base and they're just push fitting at the moment, they're pretty tight. And each one of those has a captive nut in a slot you can just see there so that I can just bolt down the lid. That's most of the mechanical build done for the base at least. Of course there's the thing that goes on this stick we'll discuss later. But for now we need to get some electronics in to drive those wheels. So we're going to be running ROS on it and what we really need is to be able to drive at a specific velocity and get the actual velocity back from the wheel encoders really accurately. So with my previous robot I just had some motor encoders on the wrong end of the motor basically so that we could see how fast the wheels were going. We had some hacky code that regulated the speed then we recalculated the velocity that we were travelling at from that code. But we've got brushless motors in this one, so that opens up quite a few more possibilities. Yep, it's an O-Drive 3.6 56 volt version. We're just gonna run on 24 volts though, but that should give us more than enough power, and that will control two brushless motors with encoders. So that fits just on here. I left some screw holes in this beam here so that we can mount stuff. There's space for an optional microcontroller next to it as well. We'll discuss in a moment. But for now, there's our O-Drive. And of course you can see the motor power wires are just each side there so you can easily bring those to the green connectors and the encoders for this are just on the back here so those wires are really accessible as well so go and plug into the O drive so that we can drive everything with encoders. Around this side as well I've made a battery pocket that just drops in there and that allows us to put some lipos in, probably these 24 volt ones. We'll get a couple of those in there for the main drive. You'll notice I've got the batteries and the motors right at the front here, and this stick is also offset to the front. And that means that basically the robot wants to lean this way. So even though we've got no springs in that suspension arm, we're still taking the load off it by making everything front heavy. So that means we don't need very strong springs and everything tends to lean forward anyway. To drive the robot and to install ROS on, we're going to need a microcomputer though. In the previous ROS robots, the TurtleBot has a Raspberry Pi 3B+, and in my orange ROS robot, I put a Raspberry Pi 4. But this one, we're going to do some much cleverer stuff. So as well as running ROS on it, we want to do image recognition and some other things. So a big thanks to NVIDIA for sending me the Jetson Xavier NX, which is a massively powerful supercomputer. It's also tiny. I've got it here. We'll have a closer look in a minute. But this is basically a box of GPU that we can do deep learning models and transfer learning and those things I demoed in previous videos as well as running ROS on it. It's got a lot of GPU but also 8 CPU cores and 16 gig of RAM so let's have a closer look. So that is the Jetson Nano on my previous tracked robot project and this is the Xavier so you can see they're really similarly sized. The common thing about both of them is that the actual processor is just this credit card size piece here so you could build that into your own embedded application but the development kit comes with a carrier board that's got all the ports on. The Xavier Xavier, as well as being massively more powerful, hence the fan, has also got Wi-Fi, and that's what this plastic thing is around here, so we've got the Wi-Fi aerial. There's also a slot on here, I believe, for an SSD. I've made this carrier that's 3D printed for it just to slot into, like that, and that means that we can mount it in the robot. So I've put that carrier at a bit of a funny angle with a couple of wedges, and this just slots right in here. And that's a dirty hack, because when the lid is on, we don't want these ports to be too close to this lip here. So I've just made sure it points into lots of free space so we can plug in stuff with USB, etc. In terms of power supply, the Xavier NX ships with a 19.5 volt power brick at 2.37 amps, although the actual thing will run between 9 and 20 volts and it does its own onboard 5 volt regulation, so we'll probably just pop another 12 volt battery in there. So I've got a really long camera cable here and I've got a Raspberry Pi version 2 camera mounted at the top of the stick and the Jetson Nano and Xavier are compatible directly with those cameras. They plug straight into the carrier board and all the examples work by default with them. So I've used these previously on the Jetson Nano track robot and a couple of other examples. So one of the advantages about having this tall stick is that instead of having a floor robot with a camera looking up at things, looking at everyone's chins, and looking at lights in the ceiling that dazzle the camera, having the camera much higher is much better because it puts it at human height. This is just over four feet tall at the moment and it's probably gonna get taller. That means it can also look down at objects on tables. I'm running the off-the-shelf Detectnet example that ships with the Xavier and the Jetson Nano and we're getting around 100 frames a second there. It will run much faster. I'm pretty sure we're just maxing out the bandwidth for the camera here rather than the Jetson Xavier itself. So there's still tons of overhead for everything else it needs to do.
There are more mechanics to be built on this in the future. We're going to have a section that actually goes up and down this stick, and this is V-slot extrusion, so we can use V-wheels in the grooves and drive it up and down by some means. We'll have a taller head on here with more sensors and cameras, and also a robot arm. So it's quite inspired by the Unbounded Robotics UBR1 and the Willow Garage PR2 robots, which both have arms. Obviously we can navigate with ROS with this robot to get it to go to a location. Then it can detect objects using the Jetson Inference Deep Learning models. And then we can use the arm and the kinematics to go and grasp an object. So we can actually make it do some useful things. Also with this stick, we could have a telepresence module so we could have a screen on there for telepresence, which is quite apt at this particular time of what's going on in the world. For that reason, we may move the Jetson Xavier NX further up, so it actually lives nearer the sensor, so we don't need all these long cables, but that's something that we'll do in the future. For now, it'll stay in there so we can get ROS on and get it navigating. There probably will be another microcontroller in here, probably a Teensy 4 that we can program like an Arduino and use the Arduino ROS serial library, and that'll sit in between the Xavier and the hardware. Now, we could plug the O drive straight into the Xavier with USB or a serial port. It might make more sense to modularize it and have some stuff running on the Teensy, specifically for the stuff that's up there as well, if we have any more DC motors with encoders and all the arm control. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. It looks like a pretty commercial platform to me. So that looks quite good from a hardware perspective. Next time we'll be putting the laser on it and hopefully getting ROS running on the Xavier to get it navigating. So don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. There'll be plenty more updates on this one and all the other projects. Also, if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below. And thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my special link to get the discount. All right, that's all for now.